In this video, we're going to discuss the electrical dynamics that occur at the PN junction at the atomic level. A diode is a semiconductor device that consists of two side-by-side -side doped regions. One region doped with P-type dopants, such as boron, and the other region, which is doped with N-type dopants, such as arsenic or phosphorus. The interface between these two regions is known as the PN junction. It's important to keep in mind that although we denote these two regions with plus and minus signs, they're still electrically neutral. Each atom in both sides has the same number of electrons as it has protons. The positive and negative signs here are used simply to symbolize a deficit or a surplus of electrons needed to complete the four covalent bonds. P-type dopants have only three valence electrons and thus have a vacancy of one electron in one of its sp3 orbitals that form the covalent bonds. We say that there is a hole in that bond that could easily accept an electron. N-type dopants have five valence electrons or one more electron than is needed to form the four covalent bonds. Thus the N-type dopants have one extra electron. At the time the two different regions are, def are created during the manufacturing process, Electrons from the N region, where there's a high concentration of unbound electrons, diffuse into the P region and fill vacancies in the half-filled orbitals and form another covalent bond. Equivalently, we can think of holes from the P-type region, where there's a large concentration of holes diffusing to the N region to form bonds with free electrons. This process of diffusion creates two topics to discuss. First, when a free electron from the N side diffuses to the P side, it fills a hole and completes a bond. As it does so, it leaves behind a bound positive charged proton in the nucleus of the dopant atom that's held in the crystal structure. Thus, the border region of the N side has a net positive charge. Similarly, when these diffusing electrons settle into a covalent bond in the P side, a region of negative charge in the P side accumulates. The flow of charge from regions of higher to lower concentration is known as the diffusion current. So holes diffusing from the P doping into the N doped represent diffusion current. Electrons flowing from the highly doped N region to the P region are another component of that diffusion current. Now this separation of charges establishes a voltage at the interface <clears throat> known as the junction potential. This voltage has the effect of pushing electrons towards the N side or equivalently pushing holes back to the P side. So this voltage that sets up due to the separation of charge gives us a positive to negative referenced voltage. This voltage would tend to push, push holes from the higher voltage to the lower voltage or equivalently electrons from the lower voltage to the higher voltage. The flow of charges resulting from the junction potential is referred to as drift current and flows in the opposite direction to the diffusion current. This diffusion continues until the junction potential gets large enough that the reverse drift current equals the diffusion current and an equilibrium is, real, is realized. This junction voltage exists without any external sources and is due to diffusion from high concentration areas to low concentration areas. The second effect of this diffusion is that the regions directly on either side of the junction have no unfilled holes or free electrons. Talking about this region right here, the free electrons have flowed to the this side in the P region, leaving behind a bound positive, but there's no, no net unbound electrons in this region here. Similarly, the electrons have filled in any holes that might have been here, giving us a negative charge, but there again are no unbound carriers here. This region then is known as the depletion region. Applying a positive voltage to the P side so this voltage source applied referenced with a higher voltage, the plus voltage on the P side, and negative referenced terminal connected to the N side, provides a source of holes, or equivalently a source of electrons, to the diode. 
In order for current to flow in the external circuit, the external voltage source must be greater than the junction voltage. No current flows until the outside device, or through the outside device, until the external voltage exceeds the junction voltage. Once that happens, there's very little resistance to current. Beyond that point, small increases in the applied voltage result in large increases in current. At this point, the diode is said to be forward biased. On the other hand, applying a reverse voltage where the positively or the higher voltage referenced terminal is connected to the inside and the negatively referenced voltage or terminal of the voltage source is attached to the P side, applying this negative voltage to the P side pulls holes from the P side and effect equivalently electrons from the N side thus expanding the width of the depletion region. The expanding depletion region represents a large resistance and allows only a very small amount of charge to flow. This state is known as the reverse biased state. As the reverse bias voltage is increased, the depletion, re the depletion region continues to widen. At some point, the reverse voltage is strong enough to start breaking covalent bonds, freeing up large amounts of electrons and holes. These unbound charges are swept by the reverse junction voltage and create a current in the reverse direction. At this point, the reverse biased, um, at this point, the reverse flow, um, the reverse uh, current flows freely. In some instances, this damage is, damages the diode. In other diodes, known as Zener diodes, this reversed bias breakdown is intended and can serve to regulate the voltage in the circuit surrounding the diode. So to re review that, as we apply a reverse biased voltage, it effectively pulls holes out of the P and electrons out of the, net, out of the N region, expanding this depletion region and increasing the plus to minus voltage across the, the uh, interface. At some point that voltage gets large enough that it starts to break covalent bonds, freeing up electrons to get sucked in this direction and freeing up holes to get sucked in this direction and you get a, um, a very, very large current able to flow with small amounts of additional voltage. We see here the typical current voltage relationship of diodes. Increasing the voltage across the diode up to some point in induces or creates a very small or negligible amount of current. But at some point, the voltage potential or the junction potential is reached, and then small changes in voltage will, be, will result in large changes of current. In this sense, the diode acts as a voltage-controlled switch. When the external voltage gets big enough, the switch closes, and the diode allows current to flow freely in the direction of, in the forward direction. Under a reverse biased voltage, the diode is effectively an open switch preventing current from flowing until you get to that breakdown voltage, at which point then large amounts of current can flow as the covalent bonds are broken. This is the symbol for a diode. The arrowhead in the diode symbol points in the direction of current flow. As we've mentioned, some diodes are used as voltage controlled switches. Other diodes have the unique characteristic of emitting light as they begin to conduct or while they're conducting. And of course, those diodes are known as light emitting diodes.